The Backstory – Abraham Lincoln's Enduring Legacy Among American heroes, Lincoln continues to have a unique appeal for his fellow countrymen and also for the people of other lands. This charm derives from his remarkable life story, the rise from humble origins, the dramatic death, and from his distinctively human and humane personality, as well as from his historical role as savior of the Union and emancipator of enslaved people. His relevance endures and grows especially because of his eloquence as a spokesman for democracy. In his view, the Union was worth saving, not only for its own sake, but because it embodied an ideal, the ideal of self-government. What was Abraham Lincoln's greatest legacy to modern America? And how did Abraham Lincoln change the world? Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Early Life and Work Lincoln was born in a backwoods cabin three miles south of Hodgenville, Kentucky, and was taken to a farm in the neighboring valley of Knob Creek when he was two years old. His earliest memories were of this home, and in particular, a flash flood that once washed away the corn and pumpkin seeds he had helped his father plant. His father, Thomas Lincoln, was the descendant of a weaver's apprentice, who had migrated from England to Massachusetts in 1637. His family moved to southern Indiana in 1816. Lincoln's formal schooling was limited to three brief periods in local schools, as he had to work constantly to support his family. In 1830, his family moved to Mackin County in southern Illinois, and Lincoln got a job working on a river flatboat hauling freight down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. After settling in the town of New Salem, Illinois, where he worked as a shopkeeper and a postmaster, Lincoln became involved in local politics as a supporter of the Whig Party, winning election to the Illinois State Legislature in 1834. Like his Whig heroes, Henry Clay and Daniel Webster, Lincoln opposed the spread of slavery to the territories and had a grand vision of expanding the United States with a focus on commerce and cities rather than agriculture. Lawyer and Politician Lincoln taught himself law, passing the bar examination in 1836. The following year, he moved to the newly named state capital of Springfield. For the next few years, he worked there as a lawyer and served clients ranging from individual residents of small towns to national railroad lines. In 1844, Lincoln partnered with William Herden in the practice of law. Though the two had different jurisprudence styles, they developed a close professional and personal relationship. Lincoln made a good living in his early years as a lawyer, but found that Springfield alone didn't offer enough work. So to supplement his income, he followed the court as it made its rounds on the circuit to the various county seats in Illinois. Political Career Lincoln served a single term in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1847 to 1849. His foray into national politics seemed to be as unremarkable as it was brief. When he was the lone Whig from the state of Illinois, showing party loyalty but finding few political allies, Lincoln used his term in office to speak out against the Mexican-American War and supported Zachary Taylor for president in 1848. His criticism of the war made him unpopular back home and he decided not to run for a second term, but instead returned to Springfield to practice law. By the 1850s, the railroad industry was moving west, and Illinois found itself becoming a major hub for various companies. Lincoln served as a lobbyist for the Illinois Central Railroad as its company attorney. Success in several court cases brought other business clients as well, banks, insurance companies, and manufacturing firms. Lincoln also worked in some criminal trials. Lincoln and Slavery As a member of the Illinois State Legislature in 1834, Lincoln supported the Whig politics of government-sponsored infrastructure and protective tariffs. This political understanding led him to formulate his early views on slavery, not so much as a moral wrong, but as an impediment to economic development. In 1834, Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which repealed the Missouri Compromise allowing individual states and territories to decide for themselves whether to allow slavery. The law provoked violent opposition in Kansas and Illinois, and it gave rise to the Republican Party. This awakened Lincoln's political zeal once again, 
and his views on slavery moved more towards moral indignation. Lincoln joined the Republican Party in 1856. In 1857, the Supreme Court issued its controversial Dred Scott decision, declaring African Americans were not citizens and had no inherent rights. Though Lincoln felt African Americans were not equal to whites, he believed America's founders intended that all men were created with certain inalienable rights. Lincoln and the Civil War After years of sectional tensions, the election of an anti-slavery northerner as the 16th President of the United States drove many Southerners over the brink. By the time Lincoln was inaugurated as the 16th U.S. President in March 1861, seven Southern states had seceded from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America. Lincoln ordered a fleet of Union ships to supply the Federal Fort Sumner in South Carolina in April. The Confederates fired on both the fort and the Union fleet, beginning the Civil War. Hopes for a quick Union victory were dashed by defeat in the Battle of Bull Run, Manassas, and Lincoln called for 500,000 more troops as both sides prepared for a long conflict. While the Confederate leader Jefferson Davis was a West Point graduate, Mexican war hero, and former Secretary of War, Lincoln had only a brief and undistinguished period of service in the Black Hawk War, 1832, to his credit. He surprised many when he proved to be a capable wartime leader, learning quickly about strategy and tactics in the early years of the Civil War, and about choosing the ablest commanders. General George McKellen, though beloved by his troops, continually frustrated Lincoln with his reluctance to advance, and when McKellen failed to pursue Robert E. Lee's retreating Confederate army in the aftermath of the Union victory at Antietam in September 1862, Lincoln removed him from command. During the war, Lincoln drew criticism for suspending some civil liberties, including the right of habeas corpus, but he considered such measures to be necessary to win the war. Emancipation Proclamation and Gettysburg Address On January 1, 1863, Lincoln delivered the Emancipation Proclamation, reshaping the cause of the Civil War from saving the Union to abolishing slavery. The Union Army's first year and a half of battlefield defeats made it difficult to keep up morale and support strong for a reunification of the nation, and the Union victory at Antium on September 22, 1862, while by no means conclusive, was hopeful, giving Lincoln the confidence to officially change the goals of the war. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation stated that all individuals who were held as enslaved people in rebellious states henceforward shall be free. The action was more symbolic than effective, because the North didn't control any states in the rebellion, and the proclamation didn't apply to border states, Tennessee, or some Louisiana parishes. On November 19, 1863, Lincoln delivered what would become his most famous speech and one of the most important speeches in American history, the Gettysburg Address. Addressing a crowd of 15,000 people, Lincoln delivered his 270-word speech at one of the bloodiest battlefields of the Civil War, the Gettysburg National Cemetery in Pennsylvania. The Civil War, Lincoln said, was the ultimate test of the preservation of the Union created in 1776 and the people who died at Gettysburg fought to uphold this cause. Lincoln evoked the Declaration of Independence, saying it was up to the living to ensure that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth, and that this union was dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The common interpretation was that the president was expanding the cause of the Civil War from simply reunifying the union to also fighting for equality and abolishing slavery. On the night of April 14, 1865, the actor and Confederate sympathizer John Wilkes Booth slipped into the president's box at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. and shot him point-blank in the back of the head. Lincoln was carried to a boarding house across the street from the theater, but he never regained consciousness and died in the early morning hours of April 15, 1865. Lincoln is frequently cited by historians and average citizens alike as America's greatest president. An aggressively activist commander-in-chief, Lincoln used every power at his disposal to assure victory in the Civil War and end slavery in the United States. 
The most lasting accomplishments attributed to Lincoln are the preservation of the Union, the vindication of democracy, and the death of slavery. All accomplished by the ways in which he handled the crisis that most certainly would have ended differently with a lesser man in office. His greatest achievement, historians tell us, was his ability to energize and mobilize the nation by appealing to his best ideals while acting with malice towards none in the pursuit of a more perfect, more just, more enduring union. No president in American history ever faced a greater crisis, and no president ever accomplished as much. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and tell us what you want to see next in the comments section below.